I'm Vim Nadera and I write, teach, and perform. In today's episode of Cultural Cast Online, I will be talking about a work by Paz Abad Santos entitled Tiboli from the Cultural Center of the Philippines Visual Arts Collection. Paz Abad Santos, or Tita Ching as endearingly referred to, is an assumptionista, in other words, confident bred from childhood to adolescence. After 11 years, she fell in love, got married, and started a family. However, the artist in her was always there, and she decided to study again. She completed the Certificate of Fine Arts in 1981 and a Bachelor of Fine Arts both at the University of the Philippines where she graduated magna cum laude. In 1992, she was selected as one of the CCP 13 Artist Awardees. When I first saw Tiboli at the Museum of Philippine Arts in early 1980s, it looked like a mystery. Compared to the other works on display, it was not so big to be noticed. It was rather small, but to me it stood out, the odd one. It was made of fiber and cloth, a bit monotone and mostly brown with small hints of yellow that looked like gold. However, what made it most interesting was that it posed a lot of questions for me. Who was then a fresh psychology major enrolled at an art workshop at the Cultural Center of the Philippines? What is art? Who is qualified to make art? What is the role of the artist? It was unlike the so-called traditional works of art I've seen before. And thus, it made me curious. The first historical critical study of Philippine literature was a dissertation by Benvenido Lumbera in 1967 entitled Tagalog Poetry 1570 to 1898 Tradition and Influences in its Development. In 1974, playwright director Frank Rivera and other colleagues from the Philippine Educational Theater Association or PETA was invited to do a workshop at Mindanao State University in Marawi City, Lanao del Sur. Rivera stayed on to teach and form what is now known as Sining Cambayoca, that pioneered the so-called folk theater company in the country. After two years, Ballet Philippines artistic director Alice Reyes collaborated with Lumbera to produce the Philippine contemporary rock opera ballet Tales of the Manuvu. Both Reyes and Lumbera eventually became recipients of the National Artist Award. Kidla Tahimik, another national artist, defined what he meant by indigenous in his 1977 semi-autobiographical film, Perfumed Nightmare, which was released in the United States by the director Francis Ford Coppola's American Zoo Trope Studio. In 1982, Joey Ayala recorded his albums Panganay ng Umaga and Magkabilaan in Davao City using the hegalong of the Tiboli and other indigenous musical instruments with electric guitar, bass, drums, and synthesizer sequencer. For her part, Tita Ching used thread, yarn, fiber, burlap and other indigenous materials in her first individual show in 1980 called Strands. Tiboli was part of it, which was first exhibited at White Room Gallery at the University of the Philippines College of Fine Arts. It was well received and it transferred to the Heritage Arts Center for her first solo exhibit, then to the City Gallery. It traveled almost every month that year. Her fascination for the Tiboli didn't stop there. In October 1989, she again did another exhibit 
entitled Tinalak and Beyond, this time at the De La Salle University Art Gallery. And in June 1990, Tinalak Evolution 1982-1983 to at the Little Theater Lobby at CCP. So why the interest in the Dreamweavers? Is it right to make something about them and call it art? Even if the artist is not a Tiboli? The same argument can be asked about the aforementioned works by Benvenido Lumbera, Alice Reyes, Frank Rivera, Kidla Tahimik, and Joey Ayala. These are products inspired by our nation's richest history, created by qualified intellectuals and creative makers. Let's set the record straight. Tita Ching is a hell of an artist. Not enough has been said about her innovations with art therapy. Our point of interest merged, I think, around 1994 and 1995, when I was working on my masteral thesis about the use of poetry as therapy for cancer survivors at the St. Luke's Medical Center, where she was conducting sessions as part of Patients Forum. Therapeutic sessions with them led to ACE's first expressive arts therapy held at the National Art Center in Mount Makiling in Los Baños, Laguna. From there, I was able to write a play called Sense of Tumor, which was directed by Fernando Jose for Tatanending. This experience resulted in the creation of an umbrella organization of cancer doctors, nurses, therapists, patients and their families, and caregivers that we called Kapisana ng My Case sa Pilipinas, Incorporated. Tito Ching and I served as founding members. It was based at the East Avenue Medical Center, where she had been helping from 1996 to 1998. But Tito Ching was involved with so many therapy groups as an art therapist, using her fabric of life alcohol and drug rehabilitation and geriatric daycare program at St. Luke's Medical Center, Philippine Lupus Club at Philippine Children's Medical Center, Cancer Institute Support Group Services at East Avenue Medical Center, and Busum Bodies at Makati Medical Center, and many more. Although our work exists in separate fields, our relationship was symbiotic. We always bonded over a common denominator. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Cultural Cast Online.